Okay guys, so what you're going to need for this uh, solar uh, e-bike and gadget recharging station, you're going to need some solar panels. Now I'm using two 100 watt 12 volt solar panels. Now these are actually made by different manufacturers, but they're within the same uh, range for amps. This is I think made by EcoWorthy, and this is made by Renogi. They're both 200 watt, or they're both 100 watt panels, uh, 12 volt panels. They are facing the sun. Our sun is a little bit higher now because it's getting later in spring, so I've got them angled so that they're getting the most uh, sun that I can get at this time of year. Uh, it, when, they, when it gets really hot, high in the summer time, the sun will be almost straight up and I will lay these straight out flat. In the winter, we don't get as much sun down, we don't get as much sun and the sun travels at a lower arc, so then I will angle them up higher to about 45 degrees, so I'm getting more sun this direction. That's really all you need to know about solar panels, okay? Make sure that you're getting the ones that are close to the same amps, 12, uh, two 100 watt panels are fairly inexpensive. You can make your own mount system I, or you can even prop them up against a wall. I'm just using this old trailer because it was convenient and it's easy to tip back and forth. So you've got solar panels, then you're going to need a uh, power controller. Now the controller that I recommend is an MPPT power controller. That is a multi point power tracking system. Uh, you'll get more out of your solar panels using an MPPT power controller. But if all you can get is a PWM controller, which is like one of these, this was made by Renogi. This is a 10 amp controller. That's plenty uh, for what you're going to be doing uh, with this unit. If you get the MPPT power controllers, you'll get anywhere from 10 to 30% more out of your solar panels. So it's worth the extra money. But PWM controllers do work fine. All you need to do is run your wires from your solar panels uh, together, red to red, black to black. It's going to be a 12 volt system. Then you're going to connect those to your power controller. Your power controller has stubs in here where you just put the wires in and connect it to your power controller. But before you connect the solar panels to the power controller, always connect the battery first. Now that's the next thing that you're going to need. You're going to need a battery. Now you can use either the AGM sealed batteries. Uh, I recommend the LifePo 4, which is a lithium phosphate battery, and that's what this is. This one's made by Bacteria. Uh, the reason is uh, an AGM battery weighs more than this and only holds about half as much capacity. So you're going to get more capacity in a LifePo 4 battery than you will in an AGM battery, uh, and they're not all that much more expensive. So I recommend the LifePo 4 batteries. But if you've got an AGM battery sitting around, it will still work for this system. So. This is uh, made by Bacteria. This is a 100 amp hour LifePo 4 battery, uh, lithium iron phosphate battery, and it will recharge in about six hours of solar good sunshine from these 200 watt panels if I don't have anything running off of it. It will completely recharge this battery. Now, the other thing that you're going to need is a inverter, and this is uh, made by Energizer. This is an 1100 watt uh, power inverter. Uh, I recommend pure sine wave inverters, but for this use, for recharging your e-bikes and running small gadgets, you don't need pure sine wave. You can use just a standard uh, inverter, and you don't you don't have to pay the extra money for a pure sine wave inverter. But if you want to get a pure sine wave, in, wave inverter, you can also use it for running things like microwaves and uh, your uh, other expensive maybe computer equipment and stuff like that. But this kind of inverter here will run you probably about 100 to 150 dollars. Uh, it's 1100 watt inverter. It has two AC slots and some USB plugs on it. This you will connect directly to the battery, okay? And your power controller can then be connected to the battery. Always connect to the battery first and then to your solar panels. Give it a minute so it reads what's going on with the battery and make sure that it's, it's charging correctly, okay? So those are the three components that you need. The inverter converts the DC power from the battery into AC power, and then you're going to use your charge controller from your e-bikes, and this is my charge controller from the Aerial X, from the Aerial X, and you're going to charge that, and you're going to use that to charge up your e-bike batteries, okay? And you'll notice it's 110 volt, it just plugs into the inverter like so, and the controller is going to take about 140 watts. So I can recharge this as long as the sun is up. I can recharge my aerial rider battery in about five hours generally. Okay, five to six hours depends on, on how low I drained it. For one of my trips up to town and back, which is about 20 miles, it will take about five hours. If I go uh, the longer distance, I want to ride 30 miles, then it's going to probably take me about six hours to recharge it. In summer, when we ride most of the time, I get more than enough sunlight for doing that. All right, and the battery is still going to be charged up 
when I am not charging this, because remember, I'm only charging this when I need to ride. So the rest of the time, the solar panels are charging up this battery, so you can use it for all kinds of other uses. You can recharge all your other uh, gadgets. You can recharge your phone. It has a USB cord on, plug on it. So you can recharge anything that has USB plugs. Uh, I use it for charging my drones uh, and uh, my RC trucks and things like that. Uh, also, I use it for recharging my power tools that I use outside. And I've even used this for running uh, my snowblower uh, this winter uh, because I wasn't charging up my heat bike, so I had plenty of power. And I use another inverter. I had this set up uh, inside with a pure sine wave inverter, which I'll show you in a minute, that I use to run my microwave, okay? And I am using inside, I'm using this system with a 200 amp hour battery instead of a 100 amp hour battery because I wanted more storage capacity to last longer overnight. It's hard to tell the difference in these charge controllers. And if I happen to get these backwards where one's an 18 amp and one's a 20 amp, could cause serious damage to the e-bike batteries and could also cause a fire uh, because it could cause the batteries to malfunction inside and they could overheat. So if you have more than one charge controller or you have charge controllers like this that look similar, make sure you mark your charge controllers so you know which one goes with which e-bike. These lithium iron phosphate batteries are extremely safe. In fact, I've seen demonstrations where they have shot these things, dropped them off of buildings and everything else, and drilled through them, and they simply just will not catch fire or explode, except under extreme situations. That is not necessarily true with the lithium batteries that comes in your e-bikes. So I really recommend if you're, when you're charging up your e-bikes, make sure that you are monitoring them the whole time. Don't leave them on the charger when you're not around. Charge them only up when you can monitor them and check on them, and make sure you unplug them as soon as they're charged. All right, folks, again, that's all you need. Solar panels, a battery, a power controller, either PWM or an MPPT power controller. I recommend MPPT. An inverter, and you can get an inverter, uh, a, a good size for this would be at least 500 watts. This is 1100 watt inverter, but remember you only need 140 watts for this. So a 500 watt inverter would be a good size for this system. But if you want to run something bigger like a microwave, then get a, at least 1100 uh, watt inverter, uh, and I would recommend pure sine wave inverters for anything like microwaves, fridges, or anything with a motor. Okay, so just this is just a quick walkthrough of my 200 watt recharging station used inside my cabin. Now, as I said, I'm using a 200 amp hour LifePo 4 battery instead of the 100 amp hour battery. I use that because I'm only recharging my e-bikes about every other day or sometimes not even that often. And so the, the solar panels are recharging this great big battery, 200 amp hour battery, for use for other things like running my microwave and running power tools and stuff like that. Now, I am using a 1,000 uh, uh, watt inverter and that is a pure sine wave inverter i use a pure sine wave inverter some some equipment need pure sine wave inverter so you should get a pure sine wave inverter if you're going to be using a microwave or something like that and i'm using a renoji and i'm using that renoji uh rover that's a 30 amp mppt power controller and i can tell you there's a major difference when you're using an mppt power controller uh that power controller there uh averages about 30 percent more than a pwm controller the one that's like it above it right there so you want to use a an mppt if you want to get the most out of your solar panels but a pwm controller will work and then i'm using this primarily for recharging my e-bikes uh running small gadgets like you can see my cooking appliances and stuff up there uh, and uh recharging tools but my main purpose for this is to run my microwave and some people always want to ask can you run a microwave off of a small solar power system absolutely you can now this is a, a, a microwave that uses a right around a thousand watts about 950 to a thousand watts when it's running and it's plugged into that inverter down there so i'll just show you that it, it does work we'll just start it up here so now it's on and now generally when i'm cooking i'm an old guy I'm an old guy, so a lot of times I'm just heating up meals. So I'm heating up burritos, I'm heating up chicken strips, you know. But if I want to cook a meal, I can. But generally, most of the time, I'm only running this for like five minutes at a time. And so, you know, it's not going, even though it uses a lot of power when it's running, it's running such a short amount of time that as soon as I turn it off, the solar panels outside will start charging up the battery again. And so it has plenty of power to recharge this up, and I can use this three or four times during the day. Or if I'm hooking, cooking a meal that may take 15 or 20 minutes, maybe I'll only be able to run it once or twice twice a day, but I can still run it for that full amount of time just off that 200 watt uh, recharging station. And it works perfectly. All right, folks, hope you like this uh, quick video and uh, I'm ready to go riding my e-bike. Have a great summer.